you get better results with ChatGPT if you use this prompt formula. But what is a good prompt formula and do you need it? What are the five elements you need to include? And how much better of an answer can you actually get? When I show you this, getting a better result in ChatGPT is inevitable. But it's very important that you pay attention to each of the five steps because if you miss one of them or you don't include one of them, the result that you will get is way worse and then you have to do multiple threads and follow-up questions, which isn't ideal. So stay to the end where we imagine all of them together to get the perfect result. Hey, what's up? My name is Andy FL. I've been teaching AI tools for almost a year now. And the number one mistake that I see beginners do in ChatGPT is prompting. So when I first started, I started writing prompts like this. Give me a shopping list for a pasta carbonara recipe. And sure that works, but it's not at all the best way. The same goes if you're writing educational content or content for work, brainstorming, coding. And it started getting so frustrating to me that ChatGPT was not giving me the exact answer that I was looking for. So I went head first into research, watching a bunch of these YouTube videos, talking about the best prompt formula, reading articles and trying to learn what is the actual best prompt formula? Some of them worked, some of them didn't work, and some of them have unnecessary parts that you actually don't need. And over the next couple of months, I was doing programming, I was doing language learning, and I refined a prompt that I think works for most cases that can help you get better responses. It's all happening in these five parts. Therefore, let's dive into all the five parts of this perfect prompt. Part number one, role. So take a look at this prompt now. We have role plus the exact prompt that you want. The reason the role prompt is so important is because you can get them to act as anything and the result will be drastically different. So I'm gonna say act as a crying baby, give me a shopping list. As a crying baby, I might not be the best at writing shopping lists, but here's what you need. <laughs> now, if you ask it to act as a Michelin star chef, it's going to give you a completely different result. What's important for your success in this is that you actually know who is the best person to help me. You got it? Well, let's go to the... Let me show you an AI logo maker that's different. Look at this AI generated logo and look at this one and this AI generated logo. Best part, you can actually edit the entire thing, change the text and the icons. Just go to kittle.com and take a look at this insane designs. Create a new project, click on the logo generator and now just describe your logo. Let's do a vintage logo for a cafe and click on generate logos. I like all of them, but let's say like this one. Here are the results. I like this one the most, but it's not perfect, which is why we're going to edit, which you normally can't do in other AI software. Say I want to change the text to Bean Symphony. I click on OK, and now it has the same style. Same with this text. I'm going to copy paste this. We just changed it. And what about this icon? I'll search for Bean. And now it's looking perfect. If I want to, I can also change the color of the entire logo. But how does it look like on a shirt or maybe a sticker? Well, all we need to do is click on the mock-up. We can put it on a shirt, put it on a bag, and of course, our coffee cup. So you can sell this easily. Try Kittle AI X by clicking my link in the description down below because they'll give you unlimited free credits all the way to December 31st. Thanks so much to Kittle for sponsoring this section of the video. Well, let's go to the second part, which is context. Since we have the first part, which is the role, now we want to give more context about what's about to happen. An example could be I'm hosting a dinner party for five. If you're a software developer, you could say I'm making an iOS app a desktop application, a Chrome extension. If it's for your work, you can say, I'm working in a company X, Y, Z. This is really important because if you don't give it any context and you just go directly to the next step, it's not going to give you the best answer. Part number three, a question. As you can see, we have the act as, we have the context now. The most important part is a question. A lot of people are asking them to do a task, for example, give me a shopping list, right? The reason a question is more important is it can give you way more variables and help you, especially in the beginning of a prompt chain. Remember, we can always follow up with it later, 
but actually having a good prompt to begin with helps the process so much more, especially if you're doing hard to do things like coding. If you just keep going down and down and down, actually one of the best ways is to go all the way back again, refine your first prompt so that you will get better responses through the entire thread. So the question, what can I make? Or what do you recommend? Or what should I do? Or how do I do it? To me at least gives me better results. If I don't like the result, I usually change the question or the other two parts of this prompt so that you can get a better response. Usually nothing is better than a great question. Part number four, tone. This is important for you, especially if you're doing anything like education based, or maybe you're having to do professional tone, or maybe you don't want so much tone, just program it, give it to me. Sometimes it's not even necessary to add tone. So this one is optional. For this example, I wouldn't add tone in here. But when I use it for YouTube videos or ideas, I definitely add a conversational tone in there, more personal tone in there. So it doesn't say these words like all bite. You guys see chat GPT right all bite all of a sudden. He was making progress, albeit rather slowly. <laughs> albeit? <laughs> See, I can't even pronounce it. So how it looks like at the end is just tone, colon, conversational, professional. You could also say like talking to a fifth grader or like talking to my grandma or tone like talking to my family. These help really well. But all of it is not coming together unless we go to part number five, the format. As you can see, we have the role, we have the context, we have the question, we have the tone. Now, which format do we want it in? Do you want it in a to-do list? Do you want bullet points? Do you want it in a table? Do you want the format to be a to-do list? Well, let's see how that looks. As you can see, the prompt is just way different and gives us a complete new kind of paradigm of the answer that if we didn't prompt it like this, it wouldn't even be close to giving us this answer. And as you can see, the prompt is not even that long. But what if we format it in a table, save and submit, as you can see, it's now making a dish description, as well as a wine pairing. So maybe that's the format that you want. So you can just easily check it through. Or since we got Dolly three in here, we can even have it format as an image. And as you can see, it's now creating the image for us. And here you go, a visual representation, probably not what we want here, right? But just want to explain the format. Usually my favorite format is step by step guide. But now you hopefully understand the perfect prompt formula. Therefore, next time you go to chat GPT, use the role context question, tone and format so you can get better results. When are you going to start using it? Well, I hope it helped subscribe for more check out our sponsors in the link in the description and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.